Howdy folks and welcome to this tutorial video for Blender where I'm going to show you how to create a rigged mesh skirt for the eborn reborn e blah, 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 <laughs> the e body reborn uh, mesh avatar as you might see it in Second Life or Open Sim. This tutorial is not aimed at beginners, but I'll try and explain what I'm doing as I go along. I need to apologise in advance for any kind of sniffing, coughing, sneezing due to allergies that I've got. Um, and also, I've got my notes on another screen, so if I'm, if I'm looking a bit shifty-eyed, it's because I'm looking at my notes on another screen. So you will need to download Blender um, and I'll put the links for the download in the file in the uh, video description. The version that I would recommend you use is the Blender long term support version, uh, whichever one uh, is kind of most recent. That's the LTS version for your particular operating system, whether that be Apple or Microsoft or Linux. And like anything, uh, not necessarily with Blender, that's pretty, pretty safe, but any files that you download off the internet do check with your virus checker of choice. You'll also need to download uh, the eBody Reborn template blend file and at least one of the textures. Uh, there's a blue texture and a red texture that I've got. Likewise, links in the description. I've also included links to a rigged um, skirt that I've already made and the full eBody Reborn kind of dev kit. I don't think it's an official one, but it's it's close enough uh, that you can actually make rig mesh. So let's crack on. Let me just get rid of that uh, web page. So once you've downloaded the eBody Reborn template and the, the one of the textures. You should be looking at something on your screen once you open the file in Blender that looks something like this. Now, just to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to enable my screencast keys, which just is an add-on that allows me to show you what, what keys and what mouse button actions I'm doing when I'm when I'm working in Blender. You won't you won't need to do that, but it's it's the mouse, the mouse icons here on the left hand side. Another thing you might want to do, or you, you will want to do, is uh, enable some of the add-ons. So if you go to your preferences uh, which is edit preferences, click on the add-ons tab you'll need to uh, in the search box type in the word node n-o-d-e and make sure you've got a tick where it says no node wrangler put a tick in there and go down to the preferences and make sure that you're auto saving or just click on save and save those preferences so i can I can close that, oops, I can close that window I think, there we go, right, something else you might want to do, particularly if you're going to move this this file once you've created the mesh clothing to another machine or send it to a friend or whatever, you will want to go to file and external data and put a tick in the automatically pack resources. 
which means any textures that you use, uh, which you use in this creation process and save are, are saved into this file so that if you move it to a different computer, you've got everything there you need to carry on. Right. Um, if you notice in the collection here, we've got two collections. We've got collection six, uh, which is the mesh body. I'm just going to shift click and join those together. Uh, just go object join. And we've got the um, armature. I think of it as a skeleton, but it's actually an armature. Um, and that's on collection 11. So I'm going to rename these. So I'm going to call collection 11 armature. And I'm going to call collection 6 um, avatar just because it makes it a little bit easier and for now we don't need to see the armature so I'm just going to hide that what we're going to do now is without anything selected we're just going to add a new mesh we're going to add in a cylinder and then if we go to the, the little I don't know what that's called the little box here where you you add the cylinder I'm going to change the uh, vertices count to 64 and this is the number of pleats um, that we'll be making around the skirt so in other words we'll, we'll have about 32 pleats on this skirt so 64 we don't need to generate UVs we'll do that ourselves a little bit later and we don't need to fill it either so we're going to say nothing for the fill we can also uh, shade that smooth just to make it look a little bit prettier so what we're going to do now is just scale that so I'm going to scale it down and then I'm going to move it I'm just going to use the, the tools there to do that I'm just scrolling my mouse wheel to, to move in. So what I want to do, I'm just going to go into wireframe. I'm going to scale that down so it's about the same size as um, the kind of waist, kind of hips area of our avatar, of our mesh. I'm going to scale it on the Z axis very slightly. So something like that. Uh, I might move it down a bit more. Scale it a little bit more. And I might, I might scale it on the Z direction a little bit more, a little bit. So it's kind of more like that. That's pretty close to how I want it. So now I've done that. I'm actually going to go into edit mode. I'm gonna box I'm gonna go on to vertice select, box deselect the top. I'm just gonna press S and shift and Z to lock the Z height and scale scale out this the bottom of the skirt. In fact, I might still move that up a bit. Uh, no, we're probably okay like that. So, now what we need to do, let me just hide that. Woo! Okay. Didn't mean to do that. Oh, I'm not quite sure what I've done there. That was clever. Okay, that's interesting. Let me just have a look. Oh, cylinder, there we go. Um, yeah, so I've obviously added that into the avatar collection, but let's not worry about that. What I need to do now is 
I need to go to object mode. Let's just move that cylinder outside of our collection. Um, I'm going to hide that and hide that just so that we're now looking at our, um, just our simple mesh for the skirt. I'm using my numeric key just to go to top view. And with the bottom verts selected, I'm going to do a checkered deselect. And then I'm going to swap to the 3D cursor. I'm going to go Shift and Z to lock it. I should have locked it into <laughs> Shift and Z. Okay, that didn't work. Um, okay, I'm just going to press R oh, and rotate. Like that. Maybe we need to do that a bit more. And maybe scale it and do Shift and Z. Like that. Okay, it's looking good. What I also want to do is extrude the top of that, but I won't do that right now. Um, let's bring back. Avatar. Right. So what we need to do now is we need to parent this skirt that we're making to the armature. So select the skirt first, shift select the armature, and then go object parent. And you need to choose with empty groups. Then we're going to go back. We're going to hide the armature. We're going to select the skirt. Go to edit mode. We're going to select in wireframe one of these birds. Do control R. And we're just going to divide it up with a loop cut. So we've got some more mesh to work with. Um, yeah, so what we did when we parented it to the to the armature was if we go into the uh, data option you can see that we've got these vertex groups that have been made on the skirt that correspond to the um, the names of the bones in the armature which is how how the weights from the mesh of the figure get transferred to the skirt anyway let's carry on we now need to give this skirt a material. So I'm going to select on here. If you if you find your um, your 3D view isn't looking quite the same as mine, you might need to click on uh, this little down arrow, and you might need to take the ticks out of scene world and scene lights because then that enables HDRI lighting. And you can click on this and choose. Which, uh, which HDRI image you want to take the light in from. And you've got an option for strength and world opacity and all that good stuff. But it, it's just an easy way to light, light the scene. So let's carry on. As I was saying, we need to uh, create a new material. So we'll go to the material tab. 
with it selected we'll just say new we make sure that we're using nodes as well and we'll just say assign so I'm just going to split my window now so horizontal split I'm going to change that to be a shade and no shader editor zoom in a bit so you can see what I'm doing so I've selected pardon me I've um, selected the the principled BSDF node I'm just going to press down on control and hit T oh. I think I must have done that twice we only need it once Try that again. So highlight the principal BSDF node, hit press down on control and just hit T. And that will make a an image texture node and a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. So it's all good. So now we need to UV unwrap this uh, this skirt. So in here we can change to the UV editor window and actually we could just press U in here we can choose cylindrical projection and we need to preserve the seams and oh, we haven't made a seam yet so let's make a seam let's go to the back here Shift, Shift and Alt. Um, you can see we've selected a seam. Go Edge, Mark Seam. Select everything again. Press U, reset it. Press U, Cylinder Projection. Preserve seam, correct aspect, that's fine. Clip to bounds, that's fine. So we can scale that. I think maybe. Um, and we need to open our image. So I'm going to choose the red image to open. And then we can choose it in here, red image. That still doesn't look quite right. Let's try. Um, cylindrical projection. You might need to fiddle with some of these options. Let's do a reset on that. Okay, that's a bit better. Yeah. So I'm going to scale that just so that um, okay. And I'm just going to join those two areas. I'm going to swap that back to the properties view. Cool. So let's see what else we need to do. We need to add a lattice deformer next because we're going to deform that skirt. I'd like to make a waistband for it, but to be honest, I can't be bothered. So, in object mode, without anything selected, just add lattice. That'll add this 
cube, move it in object mode, scale it in object mode. Right, scale it about the cursor. So let's scale it about the medium point. So what we want to do is get it so it's just um just containing our skirt let's have a look from the side I have not got a look on there we go um so scale scale on the X so something like that and then we need to we need to apply object apply all transforms we need to do the same on here object apply all transforms we need to go object so origin origin to geometry same for that one uh, set origin to geometry and with the lattice selected we need to go to the lattice data property here and we just need to increase some of these options let's do it for let's do it something like that maybe maybe one in the middle so let me go back to the skirt go to the modifiers tab add a new modifier add a deform choose lattice and select lattice you can also choose it from this little box here um, and if it if the skirt shrinks that's fine don't worry about it all we got to do is just select this go into edit mode go into wireframe mode select the um the thing and just just scale it up so it, it would have been something like that maybe scale it on the z axis as well scale it on z so maybe something like that um and if you go into object mode you can scale that down like that and then if we go into edit mode we can start manipulating that um, mesh so we can scale it on the x-axis something like that we can rotate it move it something like that um, actually we enable that so let's scale it on the y again scale one that's not too bad uh, not sure about that rotation let's rotate that a little bit more right so um I'm just going to go into wireframe mode again. So at the back of the skirt, I want to move. I want to hitch up um, this bit here. I want to pull in. I want to maybe pull out this bit at the same time the 
pulling in that bit. So we'll have to manipulate this as we go. Um, Sorry, I tend to forget to talk when I'm <laughs> so I'm just moving things around here. Um, let's have a look at that. That's not too far away. Um, so if we're relatively happy with that, which I am, we can select the skirt. And we can just apply that lattice, deform, and then just delete the lattice. Now what we want to do is we want to add another couple of modifiers. We want to add a subdivision surface modifier, maybe set to 2, take off optimal display, um, Enable it in edit mode. Go into edit mode. Just see. Okay, maybe we only need it on one. Set it as simple. Um, if I get rid of the avatar. And we put that onto wireframe. You can see roughly. Do we want it on one or two? Two's a bit fine. Um, two will give us more verts. So let's stick. Let's keep it as two. Let's keep it as two. Cool. So. Also, going to add in a solidify modifier set to. I don't know. Let's have a look and see how that looks. Oh, damn it. oh, hold on. That's having it. Blends is having a bit of a spazzy fit at the moment. Hissy fit. Sorry. Let's have a think about this. So it's obviously far too thick. So zero point zero three. Zero two. It's too much. Zero five. Okay, maybe zero four. Don't use even thickness because that tends to screw things up. Um, so yeah, okay. Now what we need to do is we just need to fit this skirt around our avatar a little bit more successfully. So we're going to enable proportional editing. We're going to set it to smooth. And we're just going to have a look at some of these verts where the skin's poking through. So I'm just going to use G. I'm going to increase the size of the, the scroll button on the rags. Increase the size of how much it, of the area it's affecting. I'm going to go to normal. We could go to faces as well. So let's select a face and that one will do. So we can just pull that out, and then this one down here, just pull that out, just so that 
we're not getting so much of that poke through. Oops. It's important to make sure you select the right face that you're trying to aim for. Same here. So what we're aiming for is as little poke through as we can get away with. Okay. I don't know what that was, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. Let's try that again. Okay, that's got quite a bit of poke through, so let's... We only need to pull that right out. Same here. Don't be scared to uh, don't be scared to manipulate that mesh. It's all good. And we're just gonna look around the mesh to see if there's any more areas that look like they're gonna give us any poke through issues. And not so much. Um, you could do this poking that in a little bit, but I think that's going to just try it a little bit. If you just attach here as well, oh, it's going to cause an issue. <laughs> that's going to cause an issue as well. Um, Okay, so okay, that's just looks a little bit odd there. The same poked in. Oh, there's a bit of an issue there. Maybe so it's just a matter of working your way around. Bit of an issue around about here as well. Around right about here. So it's just adjusting it with uh, kind of least amount you can get away with. I mean, it, it's not going to be perfect. All you can do is get, try and get reasonably close. But you obviously don't want to make work for yourself with the, the body poking through the mesh. Right, so let's just double check what we've done. I can't see any poke through there, so the next thing we need to do is we need to uh, transfer the weights from this mesh figure to our skirt. So select the figure first, then select the skirt. We need to make sure the armature is shown. Go into weight paint mode. Go to weights, say transfer weights. Then we need to go vertex mapping, nearest face interpolated. We need to go by named uh, source layer, by name, destination layer, all layers, and then just click the button. What I should have done. If we go back to the skirt, we go back to weight paint mode, go down to the vertex data, and we'll just make that a bit bigger so we can see what we're doing and go up to the top. So you should be able to select um, the first vertex group and see that the weights have been transferred. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work through any um, any of these named groups looking to see which ones have applied weight to the um, to the skirt not all of them will have done if 
fact, in our case, most of them won't have done. Like the neck, the head, the eyes, the face, none of that will have transferred weights uh, because they're too far away. Clavicles, arms, nope. Um, hands, nope. Arms, nope. More hands, wings, nope. Right, right upper leg will have done. So lock that one. The knee won't. The lower leg won't. Left upper leg, that all have transferred weights. Foot. So I think that's all we've got there. So what we can do is from the drop down say delete all unlock groups. Now what we need to do is select this first group. Uh, just take the locks off for now. So with that first group selected just go up to weights and go smooth and we're going to do it twice. Smooth and smooth. Now we're going to select the next group. Weights, smooth, smooth, belly one, weights, smooth, smooth, upper leg, smooth, smooth, left upper leg, smooth, smooth, under view you can go down to tool settings, you can try a bit of smear with a strength of I don't know maybe four or five and just kind of smear some of those might have to do it in see-through mode some of those weights across and the same for here it's not actually working uh... <laughs> yeah, okay that's a shame um... maybe blur See, I would have thought Smear would do that. Let's put the strength up a bit. Okay, that's a bit better. Maybe not that much. You can afford to be... Um, you can... You can afford to be quite... Uh, not generous, but... Um, or carefree, but it's not this weight stuff isn't isn't critical. I don't know why that's not smoothing. But anyway, um, let's go back to object mode. Let's go back to that view. Right. So we now need to check to see that that's weighted, so we can uh, go to pose mode. Pose mode. So. Try rotating, that looks okay. Uh, try rotating this leg, looks okay. Not that one, maybe one of these. Not that one. Not that one. That one, I think. Um, yeah, so that's not looking too bad. So I would save that file, uh, I mean you can always come back in and um, you know alter, alter it, edit it if you need to, but now what we would need to do is select the skirt and export it, so you go file, file, export Collada. Um, I'm going to save it in, I don't know where I'm going to save it actually, uh, pleated skirt, I'm going to save it in there and go to OpenSim SL rig. that's the one you want, um, give it a name, so you could call it rigged. 
pleated skirt. Tutorial and one or something like that and say export and then um, when you import it into well certainly into an open sim uh, you'd need to select cube physics and high level of detail LOD and just upload the texture that we've used so that you can put it on the mesh um, anyway so yeah so that's that's about it so um, please do give me a like and a subscribe or if you don't do that leave me a comment and thank you for thank you for watching uh, it's been fun have fun using blender and making clothes and I'll see you next time take care bye for now